So I'm so glad I finally get to make this video because in the comment section of anything I've ever posted or anytime someone visits my apartment, this is always the question that I get. Why do I customize or make my stuff the way I do? And how? Step one is of course, Market's birthday. So I started off like many others, just doing this on drawings and doodles that I made so I could track if I'm improving over time. But then I started doing this on my tools and the things that I made and things that were expensive or just important to me. And the reason is there will be a day when the things you own break. And when that dark day inevitably comes, the question is, should you buy that tool again? Or should you make the same thing again? Was it worth it? Was it a good design? And a great way to make this decision is to look at its birthday and think about how long it lasted you. And another minor reason just for me is that as a content creator, this makes it very easy for me to find unboxing footage of something if I ever need it. So this camera, for example, is from July 30th, 2020. So I can look this up in my photos and there it is. Now to mark the birthdays, I've used tape and Sharpie, whiteout pens, label makers, plotters, and for more durable results, I've even used more advanced techniques of image transferring with an acrylic gel medium and sealing it with clear coat. I'll link to these products in more detailed tutorials below, but is it just me or is this song so good? Because it's from the sponsor today, Epidemic Sound. If you're a content creator like myself, I highly recommend you check out this platform for all your music and sound effect needs. Here are my top three reasons why. One, so I care a lot about the sound in my videos, but despite Epidemic Sound's massive, constantly growing library, it's super easy to find exactly what I need with their well-tailored playlists and mood filters. Finding the perfect sound now takes me no time at all. Two, I can download the individual stems of the songs, meaning I can just fade out the instruments and have the drums playing alone, or have sections where the drums are quieter so I can continue talking without sacrificing the music. This is a total game changer for me. Three, I hate needing to deal with copyright claims on YouTube or getting permissions from individual artists to use their music. With Epidemic Sound, I can just safe list all my channels and accounts on their site and I'm good to go. I never have to worry about copyright, royalties, or any of that. If you can't tell, I'm genuinely a huge fan of their platform, so I'm so grateful for this sponsorship. If you're trying to level up your content creation like myself, join me on Epidemic Sound with the link below. Now let's get to the next part. Step two, upgrades. So after a couple days or weeks or years of using your tools, if you're paying attention, you'll probably start to notice all the little ways your tools are falling short, the things that make it not perfect. For example, like my hot glue gun, I like using this thing with these little glue sticks because they don't get in the way as much compared to the long sticks, but the little sticks mean they get used up very quickly. I'm constantly leaving my work desk to grab refills, so here's what I made. Now I can carry a few refills with me every time and reduce my trips. Sometimes these improvements can be way over the top, like my Ender 3 Pro series, or they can be as simple as marking my camera's SD card slot so I always know which way it goes in, or using a matte screen protector on the display so I can use a dry erase marker on it to mark compositions to help make match cuts a lot easier. It doesn't matter how small or big these improvements are, they're all important. Improving my tools or making my own tools have always made me feel more motivated to use them and just happier using them. I used to hate cleaning up my desk, but now that I have this, I know exactly where everything needs to go. Cleaning up is actually satisfying and I can find my desk almost always more organized than it used to be. So this is why I'm constantly looking for ways to improve and upgrade the things I own. Step three, customization. There are many reasons why people paint their tools. Some paint it red, some paint them black, some dye them black. But why do I do it and why white? 
Well, let's start with the main reason. I chose white for my tools actually because my walls are white. You see, unlike those other makers, I'm not in a wood shop or a designated studio. I'm just in my living room. I don't even have a designated area to store all my tools. My tools are just kind of everywhere and that's okay. But with every company making ridiculously colored tools, my place would look so chaotic. But with my tools being white, if you're not looking directly at them, they can just kind of fade into the background. And even if you are looking directly at them, at least this way they look a lot cleaner. Even when I have guests over now, I don't mind having my tools laying around because they all look cohesive. I don't even mind having my 3D printer on my dinner table because I actually really like the way it looks. I also find this to be very important in my videos because they don't take attention away from what I'm trying to show you or what I'm trying to do. This allows my videos to have quick cuts while still remaining easy to visually digest. There are also some other small reasons, like I think dust isn't as visible on white as it is on black or darker colors. For most things, you can also always find a white version. Amaran, for example, just sent me their white edition 300C and look at this thing. I basically don't have to do any customization. When I do need to customize things myself though, white is also a pretty easy color to paint since most primers are already only in white. White is also capable of being any color just through different lighting. All right, now let's talk about the how. For delicate things, I like to use vinyl skins but I usually prefer to custom paint things myself whenever I can. I start by prepping the surface with a light sanding. After cleaning off the dust, I use some painter's tape to mask off areas I don't want painted. Then I use some primer that's made for plastics. After shaking it up nicely, I start with a very light coat, and then a second coat. Then I move on to whatever matte white spray paint I can find, and do a few coats of those. And finally, I wrap things up with some matte clear coat to protect everything. I do a few coats of these for more durability. Do this for the other side and now it's good to go. And keep in mind, I'm no expert at this. My paint jobs do peel sometimes, especially on my Ender 3 Pro. If you have any tips, leave them below because I know there are like actual experts out there at this stuff. Kobe Rourke on Instagram messaged me and he powder coated his Ender 3 and the results are way more durable and it's gorgeous. Kobe also wanted me to shout out Mutual Aid Hub where he does and you can also find volunteer work to help your local communities. It's pretty cool. Thank you so much, Kobe. Anyway, I know all this customization stuff is a lot of effort and it's not for everyone, but for me, I'm surrounded by these objects every day. And when I paid for them, all I wanted was the object and their functionality, not the logos, colors, and brands and identities these multi-million dollar companies have crafted for them. When I look at my tools like a blank piece of paper, I wanna be able to imagine what I can build with them, not how their logos have built me. On an unrelated note though, if there are any companies interested in sponsoring my future videos, I'd be thrilled to have your logos wherever you like. My principles are flexible. Anyway, that's pretty much everything. Thanks for watching everyone.